and now we can move on to some stuff where we're on a little bit more of familiar ground. However, I doubt we'll have too much to say on this stuff because we already did talk about it on the Nuremberg Toy Fair coverage. This will mainly be just Mange, who did not get a chance to say his piece. And then some additional comments here and there. We will start with Ninjago, because there is actually something new for Ninjago that was not at Nuremberg, or at least not something that we got to see all that well. And I will link to pictures momentarily, but the sets are the X1 Ninja Charger and the Battle for Ninjago City. So hooray. And the Battle for Ninjago City, of course, is the huge temple complete with overdone tree that we made fun of a lot, but people are actually enjoying the tree more than some things in that set, which I find baffling, but I guess it's a pretty shui tree. Um, I'm waiting for the page to load. It's not loading all too well, but I think I've got it. Uh, let's see here. Battle for Ninjago City. Yeah, I guess there are some pretty good angles of this thing. I'll post this one because it is fairly good. One thing of note that I did not notice before. Gold Hero Factory swords are on this thing. If you, I noticed that before. I didn't notice it. I pointed it out to you. I don't remember. I know you don't remember. But I, I, I find that very neat. It's a neat recolor. They subtly snuck in there. Aljo, what do you think? Do you think this is a good set deserving of its $120 price tag? No. Well, I think it's a good set. I don't think this is $120. Thanks to Mr. Weird Arch Gateway, which BZ Power members will block proportion as insulting Japanese culture. And Mr. Tree. And the Overlord Walker. That's the other big thing, which is out of uh, shot in this picture. I guess. But it looks extremely well designed. I love how this looks. The color scheme's a little weird. I noticed Jay has a slightly new outfit. For some reason, he has shoulder pads. Interesting. And I find it funny how we're not going to get the other ninja, specifically Cough Cough Cole, with shoulder pads. That is very strange. Also, I noticed that Lloyd is in his silver garb, meaning that the Overlord Spoilers. being golden. Spoilers! Oh, come on. It's not that difficult to figure out what ended up happening. Yeah. That's the other thing. I don't like how Lego spoils the Ninjago storyline without fail every single year <laughs> with their sets. Like, the, who is the green ninja? And then Toy Fair comes along and we get Lloyd ZX as the green ninja set. And we're like, oh, well, <laughs> thanks for thanks for that, Lego. Main, what do you think <laughs> of this expert-level temple? Well, you know what I'm been, I've been saying about most of these? <laughs> Not something I'd buy. However, it looks like there was a lot of effort put into it. It's not... I Hold on. Let me gather my thoughts for a second. Okay. It looks a bit thin, thinner than I, I would in, like it to if it's going to be $120. However, it does look decent. The design is definitely like well done with the placement of like all the golden pieces is really well done i think very nice aesthetics to it and uh i do like the rooftop combat the zip line that it's got at the top yeah that sort of thing kind of the stuff in the background that makes uh playing with toys seem a lot more interesting like definitely that rooftop combat putting your set sideways like that on on top of a set yeah but yeah, it's good, but it's not 120 to me, and it, but it's definitely uh, for those that are interested in Ninjago at least, those who can shell out the money, probably worth getting. Yeah, I must it's agree that. with that. See, all, all these sets as we get further on into this, and we go to Chima, it will become ever more apparent 
but the really good sets are obviously, you know, it's the expensive ones a lot of the time, and Chima has a ton of those sets this year, and it just kind of makes me sad because some of them, you you gotta wonder, a fan of system, well, they'll go bankrupt if they try to 100% a wave of like Chima and get like all the speed ores and all the stuff. At least with Ninjago, they've cut spinners, so it's a little more reasonable for people trying to do stuff. But anyway, that's the temple. The second set, because there's only two sets in the summer wave, is the X1 Ninja Charger. And it's a car. It's a $40 car. And it's Kai's car. And it has a function to where you open up the hood of the car and a motorcycle can shoot out. A hidden motorcycle. So, that's pretty neat. What do you guys think, LJ? Jump up, kick back, drive around, and crash. Uh, I mean, um, honestly, why, oh why, is it that Kai doesn't have shoulder pads when Jay does in the other set? And wait, wait, can you link a picture of the uh of the the, the temple thing with with Zane in it? Oh sure. I need to see something. Although I believe in these pictures, Zane has like fallen to the ground. And yeah, is no, I know. Out of shot, but I'll try to find one with him visible. But just comment on the charger while I look. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really cool looking. However, why, oh why, oh why, oh why is it that in every set Kai is in, somehow, some way, somebody takes his Technoblade every single time? This does not seem like a $40 set to me. I can definitely see it passing for 30 or 35 Absolutely. Um, but I love that function. I like how well designed it is. The color scheme is solid as beans. It looks really cool. I think this is the one thing that people... Sorry. One person will find offensive. Well, non-offensive to Japanese culture. I'm not letting this go. <laughs> uh but it looks really well designed. Love that function. I noticed they have some continuity with a Hunter Hover-esque machine in there. Yeah. And it just looks cool. Really odd because it's a one-off thing. But I really you know, It's kind of like a why does this exist scenario. And I guess we'll see it later on in the show. But why does Kai get a new vehicle and nobody else does? And why doesn't Zane have any shoulder pads? Why does Jay have the shoulder pads when none of the others do? That's a very good just... question, and that's kind of... I guess, to double back a little bit, that's one thing we forgot to mention because I forgot it existed in the temple set. It's the tree, the temple, the overlord walker, and Zane's flying thing. So really, there's four vehicles in the set, so that kind of justifies things a little bit more. But speaking solely about the Charger, I think it looks okay, a tad blocky, and it's a why does this exist scenario. Man, do you have anything to add? I think it looks pretty cool, if you ask me. Maybe not 40 bucks, maybe 35 40 Not 40 what am I saying? 30 35 30 <laughs> bucks. And, but that's not counting the fact that it's 426 pieces. That's quite a bit, which means... There's a lot of stuff inside this car exactly. that we don't see on the outside, which is pretty crazy. But it, I really like the the look of the car and LJ, the fact that there's a red guy on a red motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, wow. that, so that, that, was, that was a reference to uh, Akira. But anyways, oh, okay. pretty good set. Maybe should be trimmed in price a little, but... At the same time, there's got to be a lot of detail that was put into at least the interior of it because it already looks pretty good on the outside. Very true. All right. Well, with that being said, we are done with Ninjago. However, we're not out of the woods yet because we've got a couple more things to go through before we can call this coverage a wrap. And next up, solely because I have it on this page already for ease of access... We are going to talk about Ultra Agents, the polarizing reboot of the Agents theme. 
And some people hate it. Some people love it. And I can kind of understand where both sides are coming from in that aspect. So we will start off with probably the least interesting set out of the entire wave, Riverside Raid. However, it does give you a bit of a glimpse as to the theme they're going with. You have... What's his name? Can you even see what the guy's name is? Give me a sec. Let me see. Let me load. No, he, we don't know the name of the agent. Riverside Raid. Fire app. Aw, oh, yeah. Free app, not fire app. But, oh, oh you're right. It's free app. Oh, well, that makes more sense. It's just, wow. a, it's just a, yeah, like the gimmick for this theme is that there's some kind of game and you buy sets and you get a mission per character to fight these villains in said game. And we have such villains. This dude's name is Adam Acid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think the more mind boggling thing is how this is 12 bucks. Um, yeah, it, it does seem quite overpriced. <laughs> not going to lie. Price to part ratio is not good at all. Doesn't look bad. It just go looks back small. like go back almost a decade, and this would probably be half the price. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> How sad. That's what it's ridiculous. That's what happens in life. <laughs> but you know, it looks okay. Just too overpriced. Yeah, it's decent, but what the heck at that twelve dollar price? It's because of those darn crates. Probably. <laughs> LJ, aren't you excited to get Adam Acid? Um, no. But LJ, he's Adam Acid. No. He's thugging. In fact, I'm more excited to get my now newly announced poly bag from that contest on BZP. Oh, yeah. So, that's what I'm more excited for. This, 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 <clears throat> this is not $12. Okay. Well, on that happy note, we'll move on to the next set. Toxiquita's Toxic Meltdown. Now, we mocked this on a TTV episode a while back when the names were... Oh, yeah, the Toxic toxic Tahitas, blah. There yes, we go. but now we can actually see the set, and it's this radioactive toxic waste theme, helicopter of sorts, Ultra Agents versus Toxiquita, the villain, and there's this dude in, like, a white hazmat suit or something just flailing his arms around like an idiot uh, out there while people are shooting up the place and it doesn't really make much sense to me because i see like who who is the agent supposed to be is it supposed to be the dude that looks like dr octopus but with only two <laughs> two pairs of arms yep that's yeah him. That's him. What it says uh, at the top. Transparent blue chainsaw man versus Toxikita. <laughs> what do you guys think uh, of this set? If I if I needed to find a con in one word, green hair. But LJ. Green hair. Anyway. These villains no, are all they look, they're almost like HF 1.0 villains. This what? is like. Yeah, this is kind of like B-list movie villain kind of a set here. This, this, I don't see this line lasting for a while. This seems like one of their, well, it, well let's try it, but it's kind of one of those circulation lines. You know it's not going to last long. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mange, any more comments? Um... I think the outrageous part of this for me is probably the fact that this uh, lab, it, it seems that Toxiquita's attacking <laughs> is smaller than the uh, aircraft that she is <laughs> coming to destroy it in. <laughs> You're right. It's that, tiny. That helicopter monstrosity is bigger than the base they want to destroy. Wow, just wow. overkill much. Well, okay. That is that set. Now, next up, probably, in my opinion, the best set of the line, but maybe that's just me, is the Hurricane Heist. I actually love this, and I would actually consider getting this set. 
at some point if it wasn't so pricey for me and I don't buy system. It's this flying contraption that has two sets of propellers made out of those HF Chima swords that can act, that can you know spin around. It's got a bunch of stuff in there. There's HF bones used. There's a bunch of crazy stuff going on, flick fire missiles, and then it can transform into a mech when you fold down the legs and it can go stomping around. And it's Holy crap. Ultra Agents versus Cyclone the figure. <laughs> and look at this dude in his bootleg um whatever you call that. Propellers, I don't know. And there's someone with pink hair. And a police officer with handcuffs. I don't know. What, what, what do you guys think about this? This is so, this is so good. Like this set just looks so amazing, but it's so expensive and so many pieces. I would probably break the set before I could even like get anywhere close to finishing it. But it looks <laughs> really good. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion. Agreed. LJ, what do you think? Why isn't this a Chima set? Well, why is this uh, a Ultra Agents? Because think about it. Those blade pieces that we saw in, in Ultra Build Krager, this olivey green color scheme that we also saw in Ultra Build Krager, switch out some of the heroes for lions or eagles or something and switch out the cockpit pilot uh, for a crocodile... This is a Chima set. They'd have to rework the look of it, though, to have a crocodile in the front. That's not very difficult, but think about it. I, this I, looks, honestly, I, I, I kind of like this more as an agent set than a Chima set because the characters and the heroes give it personality, whereas if it was, you know, other Chima sets, you know it'd just be stupid lions fighting non-villainous crocodiles. These heroes are so... Unappealing. Well, not not so much the heroes, but like the villain Cyclone with his hilarious propeller shoulders. I, I I guess yeah that that's true, but but otherwise this is so unappealing. Con pink hair. I need not say more. Yeah, but eh, that does look pretty good looks, though. You can't deny that, that. That mech looks fantastic. That Lego is really good at making mechs. I must say that. Yeah. The, this looks fantastic. The heroes and their components are extremely interesting. What does that one guy think he's going to do with his little <laughs> handcuffs? Oh, man, well, it, I'll take you down with my metallic braces. <laughs> the, the theme of this line is all the villains have, like, natural disaster powers or something. Oh, yeah, got it. So there's toxic waste for that one dude. There's acid for the other. This guy's hurricanes, and he's causing a hurricane, and you can see the stupid police officer getting sucked into it like a tornado. And we'll see that more as we go on, but that's that's the gimmick. <laughs> yeah, looks great. With that being said, let us move on to the next one. And this is a good one. This is this is probably my second favorite set from the entire wave, just because I think it looks pretty solid, and it's not outrageously expensive either. Inferno Escape. <laughs> That's right. Not in no uh, not not Escape. Inferno Interception. Sorry, my mistake. And obviously the villain is Inferno, and he looks absolutely hilarious and over the top. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> that head. <laughs> the cone head. Definitely looks better on that packaging than the uh, actual set. Yeah, agreed with you there. But I, I still think it looks funny. <laughs> and the actual, the car, that's, it looks pretty cool too. We have trans blue Kopaka shields, which have probably existed before. But I haven't seen them. And I think it looks pretty, pretty nice. All in all. all Jay, what do you think? Yeah, I like the Tron car. <laughs> yeah, the Tron car. It looks pretty good. Main. Are those transparent Kopaka shields? Yes. The, the year of trans blue continues. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Looks good. I... Pretty much reiterate what Envy said, Tron car. So looks like it could be a Ninjago set. 
if you swap out the colors. No, it looks like it, again, could be another Chima set, considering their theme. Honestly. Well, you know, LJ, if you swap out some colors and parts on the X1 Ninja Chuck. Do not make me end you. Be a Phoenix no. car. <laughs> oh, come on, that's true. You could say but that for any set. Why does it seem like Inferno? What a lame name. He looks like a rejected Marvel villain. Either that or he looks like the disowned brother of Mr. Freeze. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inferno. Yes. Uh, I mean, it looks really good, though. The car looks cool. I just don't think it's really eye-grabbing. Yeah, but if I were to buy a set from the line, it'd probably be that, because it's not ludicrously expensive, and it's pretty solid all around. But it's also not insanely interesting. Probably has the most over-the-top villain, though, second only to the next dude. From the next set, Trimmer Track Infiltration. And this is another one of those sets that you look at it and you just have to go, what on earth, they've really jumped the shark now. So, Ultra Agents versus Trimmer. This dude with giant fists, and obviously his theme is earthquakes. And this is literally a tank with fists. That punches stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just find wow. it absolutely hilarious. Mange, what do you think of that? Kind of like this. It's kind of like how the Bow Rock were, except now with fists. You launch fists forward <laughs> instead of like a headpiece. Yeah. This is. I don't know. It kind of invalidates the point of being a tank if you're just going to be shooting stuff directly in front of you. You're right. But <laughs> certainly an interesting set outside of that. Not not the worst, but kind of silly. Uh, Tremor's head looks a bit odd in that box art. Yeah. Though I guess, actually, I'm looking at it from the side. Not the. It almost looked like that was his face turned to the side, so I thought that was weird. But, uh... <laughs> wait, are those his hands that are, like, yes. ridiculously large? On <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty weird. These villains have personality. <laughs> I'll give him that. Yeah. Imagine Unfortunately. This trimmer track versus Boxor. The ultimate battle. Oh my god. <laughs> Car going nuts outside. So anyway, yeah. And then we can have the Tarakava versus a Chiba set from later on as well. But anyway, Eldrin, what do you think of the trimmer track infiltration? <sighs> I figured it out. This is... Lego wants to make their own comic series. They want to go into the comic making business against Marvel and DC. And so these are their debut comic book villains. That's exactly what this is. This is so absurd. This looks great and this does not see this does not seem like a twenty dollar set. But it looks fantastic. It looks hilariously over the top. Over the top, yeah, but it looks good. I mean, it's funny looking. Yeah. And I like that color scheme, and it's a unique design. But yeah, the hero is, once again, the most uninteresting, boring, lame person in the world. But everything else looks cool. Yeah. And now the grand finale set of the wave, and then we will move on finally and end this show with the final theme. <clears throat> The Ultra Agents Mission HQ, featuring the villain Terabyte. Yes, Terabyte, like the storage hard drive size. And uh, I don't really know what his theme is, but he has a green mech. And he's assaulting the Ultra Agents Mission HQ, because apparently budget cuts have forced them out of an actual building and into their <laughs> truck which they have remodeled <laughs> to fold down. <laughs> so right. there's that. And there's like a ton of stuff going on. There's flying planes and jets and the pink hair person's back with a jet pack firing Con. stuff. <laughs> Con. We have terabyte running around doing crazy stuff. Some dude on an ATV <laughs> or something. So yeah. There's a bunch of crazy stuff going on here. Problem being, I believe it's a hundred dollars. 
to be fair, it does have over a thousand pieces. So take it as what you will. I would not buy this. From what people have said, old agents also had a set very similar to this. And yet, it does not really interest me much at all. To be honest, all the other sets have more personality than this one. This one just seems very dull. What do you guys think? Uh, it, yeah, the reason it looks dull is because it's not focusing on a villain. These heroes just are so uninteresting and generic and standard and they no really character are. personality at, at all. Agents. <laughs> Ugh. It, it's but weird. that mech looks pretty substandard and generic and kind of like it's trying to be a Lex Luthor mech, but it isn't, and it knows that. <laughs> Very true. And that truck truck is impressive but i'm not gonna get it yeah agree yeah it's very impressive though it's very well built which is to be expected with the lego trucks yep but yeah man. sure there's a lot to do here man Just what do you think it. okay well first of all if this terabyte nerd was actually <laughs> smart he wouldn't be in the <laughs> middle of this of this truck trying to steal something, you'd just have another robot fighting it. <laughs> uh, but the truck, the very front of the truck, looks really good. But I'm not sure about the how lackluster it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about how lackluster the inside of the uh, truck is. That's so like there's almost nothing in there. Like a satellite sticking out and a screen for all these people that there. <laughs> for all these people, there's almost nothing in there. But and well, that's it that I've got to say about that. But the mech, the mech looks interesting. At least the top half does. The legs look a bit odd from that shot. But um, yeah, I'd say it's a decent set. But coupled with its price, it's probably not as good, just because it's so. It would, I would imagine it's so ridiculously expensive for something that's a bit lackluster overall. Very true. I pretty much have to echo what you were saying. And on that note, that is Ultra Agents. I think it does its job fairly well, and there's some good set designs and personality expressed in some of those, but I'm in LJ's camp. I don't see this lasting more than one or two waves. So, that is that. Now, two more themes, but in the interest of time, because this is running long... We're only going to skim over Mixels real quick. I'm going to throw the pictures up on the screen, but we're just going to make overall passing comments on each tribe, not go into them in detail. So first we have the blue tribe, and I find these guys very strange looking. Although I really like the one on the left, how they achieved that expression on the eyes because they have a minifigure head printed with eyes underneath and then that helmet put over them to kind of give it a different look. They could have left that off and just had the normal weird looking eyes, but I think that looks better for that dude. These are terrifying. They are pretty terrifying. But, you know, mix and then mix. Yes. The mix. You know, I just, you know what, one of these days, if I ever come across any of these and I just want money to burn... I just want to burn some cash. I'll take these, I'll throw them in a blender and make a video about it. There, that's some mixing for you right there. Quite. They're good. They're blue. Then we have the brown tribe, which is actually, if you can believe it, their name is the Fang Gang. Because they all have okay, teeth. <laughs> wow. They have crazy amounts of teeth. Look at these guys. They're nuts with the teeth. Again, terrifying. Yeah, the dude in the middle is a freak show if, I, there, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> the one on the um, left. That's so. I kind of want to buy the one on the left and make it my avatar. Okay, yeah, I hate Mixels. Hate it. <laughs> hate it. <laughs> then we've got the Orange Tribe. And these guys are weird. They're like aquatic sea creatures almost. That's the look I get from them. They're orange. And they've got lots of tentacles and spikes. And they look fairly imaginative. They're not lolzy, creepy. But they're decently creepy. The one in the middle. 
looks very strange <laughs> to me. <laughs> Mange, you should get some Mixels. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> oh. They're very interesting, though. I don't have, like, anything really bad to say about them. They're oddly interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Abomination of sorts, yet not something I'd say are complete crap. <laughs> yeah, they have some good designs on some of these. Because then we have the green tribe, and there, I don't really know what they're supposed to represent, but they're equally terrifying. Mainly the dude on the left. He is... Okay, that looks like a dog's skull. With the eyes still in it. You know, you're right. That is... That is frightening. And then the dude on the right has stars for hands. <laughs> what on earth? He, he probably looks the most... Her almost nose like nose and mouth that it kind of has quite looks so dumb then we have the tan tribe and these guys also have claw they have a bunch of claws so i'm betting they're gonna be something with claws their name one's a scorpion one's this really tall dude with spiked feet and the other has like wolverine claws and extremely long arms definitely ain't as cool as wolverine I don't know, LJ. I think this dude could beat Wolverine in a 1v1. One one. Right. <laughs> Wolverine has a healing factor and bones laced wow. with metal. I don't think this guy would beat anybody in a fight. You don't know his powers? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You know what his powers are? Getting chucked into a blender with cookie dough. Yes. And then the final tribe. If you can believe it, the magic tribe. The wizard tribe. Wizard Mixels. One has like two wands and a hat and lopsided teeth. And the other has like the eyes and he has a um, wizard, wizard hats on both eyes. <laughs> and he's flying around. Is... What the heck? They gave the guy with the wizard eyes a semblance of actual teeth. And those almost arguably look creepier than the sharp teeth. Yeah. Man, you should get the one with the wizard hat eyes. I think that would be amusing. <laughs> no, that freaking thing. No. <laughs> I, li I like the other one more with the singular eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. But yeah, that, that, those are mixels. They're whatever. Mix, etc., etc. Now, the final thing today... That we will talk about and we have the benefit here because we kind of talked this to death during Nuremberg more so than anything. Chima is what we spent the largest amount of time focusing on. So basically here is the gallery of Chima stuff. Pretty much the only new things here are speed ores. And they are causing a lot and I mean a lot of controversy because they've completely reworked how speed ores look and not everyone's a fan to put it mildly and when you see one you'll know what i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna paste the, the i'm gonna throw the phoenix one up on the screen first inferno pit and well yeah i don't really know what's going on here but it's got this giant golden thing that looks to be a detachable piece with a phoenix face on the front, and it looks incredibly dumb. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. Oh my goodness! But I, I am not a this fan. Whole thing overall. <laughs> but mange. The, the whole set overall looks so odd. <laughs> it does look pretty odd. Not gonna lie. Um. Some other speed ores of note. There's Flaming Claws, which has Cragger, and I guess that's supposed to be a crocodile? Maybe? It doesn't really look like one at all to me, but it looks better than the Phoenix one, simply because it looks like the whole thing is meant to be a crocodile with eyes and whatnot, instead of just the front having a face. <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, where are the others? 
There's only like a few more. Uh, here we go. Here's one. Scorching Blades. I'm gonna post these. LJ, what are you thinking so far of the speed or change? Normally I'd have a, like a look of disgust or a look of, of anger on my face right about now, but if you could see me at this moment, I'd just be real blank faced, which I am. That's these fitting. look. These look. You know, the one it's, forgetting how they look. The one on scorching blades is the worst out of them all. Forgetting how they look. Why was this change necessary? I don't really know. That's my question. Why did they feel they had to change it and rework it to look like like a piece of string cheese with a bunch of armor attached? I think <laughs> maybe they're doing it because people have complained that the speed ores are just these giant one-piece things. That there's difficulty hooking other stuff onto them. And I think there's then more connection points now. Fault. There's like they're made of a bunch of pieces. Problem being, these pieces look incredibly ugly. So I don't. I don't ah, know. well, I never had. Yeah, I never had any vested vested interest in the speed ores. Oh no. Anyway. <laughs> okay, just when I thought I'd seen it all and the worst was over, I look at the penultimate speed, like the final speed ores set. Fire versus ice. This is supposed to represent the entire wave, and we have our good friend Laval fighting Sir Fangar. <laughs> and look at those speed orbs. <laughs> look at the faces. What on earth? This is terrifying. The lion face. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> that looks so dumb. And then the other one, it looks like a walrus or something, not like a saber tooth tiger. Well, good to see Laval has let us down again. At least he's consistent. You know, <laughs> I wish I had something to say. I really wish I had something creative I could say. Something helpful or something positive. I don't, I, I can't say anything. These look really, really, really weird. <laughs> they do look incredibly I find weird. It weird because... These things look so like atrocious, but then you're, but then they're in the same like wave as some really awesome sets like the mammoth and the fire lion. Yeah, I was actually just about to ask you because we we kind of already gave a lot of our opinions on these sets in Nuremberg. I was going to ask you because I'm sure you're scrolling through these pictures what your thoughts are on some of these mains. Yeah. I think the giant sets look pretty freaking awesome. That Fire Lion is kind of odd in the idea that they would design something after themselves. They'd make a giant thing that looks like them for battle. <laughs> kind of yeah. seems weird. I don't know. A lion piloting a giant thing that looks just like him. Uh, but the Mammoth definitely looks really good as well. And I think the uh, wolf vehicle that's there as well, I think that's what it is. It's I not. saw a wolf on it. Oh, it's not. Oh, no, what is nobody it knows what the heck it is until we see product descriptions okay. because the minifigures but, game starts. But yes. I like the look of it. It looks a lot more tankier than the other ones, but it still looks decent. Yeah. I just saw associated with it, so I thought it was a wolf thing. But whatever. It's fine. Okay. Because, yeah, LJ, I remember how we were talking about the Laval Lion, how it was a Tarakava. Now we get to see how it looks like folded down. <laughs> And what the heck? I find it more funny looking than anything. The long arms just stretching forward. No words. Oh, and also just an occasion, uh, just an, an additional plot twist in this series of Chima. The big fig mammoth, it's Mungus. This is our construction figure. And he looks absolutely nothing like he does in construction form and far superior in this big fig form. This makes me dislike his minifig form, uh, sorry, his, his ultra build form even more. Yeah. And 
unless you have anything else to say about some of these mange that pretty much wraps it up. No, I don't have anything else to say. All right. Well, then in that case, I shall close this coverage with, well, of course, we'll, like, give mentions to Ghostbusters and stuff in just a second, but I will close this actual theme-by-theme -theme analysis with our favorite lovable pal, Voom Voom, and his double oversized axes here to save the day. Look at this guy go. Truly a force to be reckoned with. I think the only thing really oversized about the axes is the giant absurd hilts. They're like super long and super wide for an axe. Yeah, that's very true. Nothing wrong about the axes themselves. <laughs> that's true. In my opinion. Okay. So, also of note, stuff that was revealed not at Toy Fair, but beforehand in press releases and whatnot, is the official announcement of Metal Beard's Sea Cow, the direct to consumer set for the Lego movie, the largest set for the wave, and it's retailing for $250. And I know that's very pricey, but. It honestly looks to be worth it, both in actual price-to-part ratio and the build itself and the amount of stuff they were able to fit into this set. I'm going to count the minifigures right now. I think it's one, two, three, four. Four minifigures plus the Unikitty plus Metalbeard himself which is a smaller variant of him from the set he was actually included in. Mess so. What? It's not Unikitty, it's Queasy Kitty. Oh, who am I kidding? Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Queasy Kitty. My mistake. I. This looks, honestly, fantastic. The best ship I've ever seen LEGO make. Uh -huh. Also, oh yeah! Double-decker couch! Yep. That way, everyone can watch TV together and be buddies! Obligatory. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Anyway. Yeah, go away. The sails are causing a lot of controversy because they're not actually made of fabric, but they're made of Technic stuff, which I think looks good, but it does look a bit jarring if you're used to the way LEGO normally does ships. Um, I don't mind it too much. And then probably the funniest thing about the entire thing is on the packaging. I, I really love what it says in the bottom left corner. <laughs> this ship does not float. <laughs> Which I guess is important to mention considering the packaging, but I just find that funny for some reason. <laughs> just oh my they, they tack it on there. <laughs> this ship does not float. <laughs> well, darn. Considering oh. its build and how how much there is in the back for it, I don't see how there's any way that it could be balanced properly in water as is. Yeah. It just seems so... Uh, when it comes to weight, it seems so disproportionate for it being able to float. <laughs> Very true. And then the final thing to talk about is the next Kuso set. They announced it a while back that it was going to be Ghostbusters. Oh, like a Cusco. <laughs> yes, Cusco. They announced a while ago it was going to be Lego Ghostbusters, but now we actually get the picture of Lego Ghostbusters. Um, and it is pretty fantastic, not gonna lie. Esso's never seen Ghostbusters. Yeah, it, it, it would probably have more impact had I that's seen a, the movie. That's a freaking shame. You're 30 disgrace. years old. He's never seen it still. Yep. But it looks like a great set, to be honest. I. Oh, yeah. Kuso is doing very good for themselves with stuff. LJ, I'll assume you've seen it. What do you think? Do you think it's a good representation? Fantastic representation, extremely detailed, extremely too, too, true to the movie. The only thing that I really wish they would have put in is that weird, dorky-looking, hot-dog-eating, green ghost thing. 
<laughs> they, for <laughs> some reason, did not put in here. I can't imagine why. But, hey, otherwise, this is great and fantastic and accurate. And anyone who really loves Ghostbusters will love this. Main. Um, I think it's pretty good. I've seen, like, uh, other model sets of it. Not from Lego, but, you know, just other toy models of it and i think it's pretty on par with those maybe could be a little bigger but it's absolutely fine i think it's a good set and i find it interesting lj that you harp on uh, meso for not seeing the movie but you can't even remember the name of slimer no i remember the name i just wanted to give a it's more so roundabout. just needed to make it so much more accessible for everyone oh yeah the big the ghost from that movie i didn't see yeah no, i remember <laughs> the name of slimer <laughs> I remember him. I, in fact, I'm. I, if I remember the fact that one of the scenes he was in, he was just gobbling up hot dogs on like on the streets <laughs> in New York. I should remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the only other thing to make note of is the fact that the Minecraft system sets, as announced in a press release by Lego, are in fact coming this year, and they will be titled Minecraft Creative Adventures. So, there's that. Did we get any nope. photos? Uh, I still want to see that creeper. Open, like the, the first thing we mentioned. Creeper is going to make or break a lot of those. Agreed. Some dude posted a mock-up on Eurobricks, which I will throw up on the screen during this little bit. And it's basically his version of a creeper that kind of makes Lego look just a little dumb for all the hassle they've gone through to try to make it and I'm actually I'm getting it right now because it would have required one recolor to actually get it to work and otherwise the bonus that it has is that it is able to articulate the legs as well rather than just kind of stand there and do stuff. And there it is. That would do it. Yep. That looks fine to me. <laughs> We're be... saved. <laughs> A fan can do what Lego cannot. <laughs> it's because for the fan. he's a special. Yes, his name's Laser Vampire, by the way, to give credit where credit is due. Never mind. So... That being said, thank you very much for listening to this extremely overblown coverage of New York Toy Fair, which I probably ended up splitting into two parts because of its length, which I will definitely be doing. If you listened all the way, you are truly dedicated. Post up in the comments your thoughts on everything that we talked about. We're very interested in seeing what some of the feedback is to a lot of this stuff, especially Ultra Agents. And it's Chima, because those seem to be very polarizing this go-around. Um, we give our regards to our fallen comrades, Viper and Kahi, who were not able to do this with us all the way. But they their memory Sucks lives me on them. in spirit. And Var. And who no. refused to Never show up in the name of professionality? Yeah, I'm not going to join midway through. That'd be unprofessional. Even though it went on so long, all he would have missed was HF. But, yeah. Ah, well. Anyway. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Messinac. I'm LJ. And I'm Tenebrain Victus. And we will see you all next time for the next video that we release. Adios, amigos.